Good morning and welcome to today's session of Imagine America Radio, our continuing Career College Exposition webinar series. My name is Lee Doubleday and I'm the Director of Operations here at the Imagine America Foundation. I'm excited about today's topic, Education and Training Opportunities for 2022 Graduates, sponsored by YTI Career Institute. YTI has three campuses located throughout Pennsylvania in Altoona, Lancaster, and York. YTI Career Institute is also a 15-year sponsor of the Imagine America Scholarship and Award Programs, having provided admissions-based financial aid to more than 5,000 enrolling Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time for our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation, our scholarship program, and how your students can apply for a scholarship to attend this institution uh, to our website, which is www.imagine-america.org. Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner again in today's presentation is YTI Career Institute, and joining us today to discuss in detail the looming technician shortage and how YTI Career Institute is helping meet this need is Jack Burke. Jack is YTI's Director of Marketing and Admissions for high schools and has been working with high schools for over 20 years now. But before turning the program over to Jack, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum with question and answers at the end of the presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A feature or the chat feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation or approximately 10.25 a.m., I will then present any questions offered by the participants. We'll address as many questions as possible and provide written responses and follow-up emails if necessary. We'll have a hard close at 10.30 a.m. So without taking any more time out of today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Jack Burke. Jack, the floor is yours. Great, thanks very much, Lee. Okay, so good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining the, uh, the webinar this morning. So you can see the screen here, Discover YTI, uh, York Technical Institute. Many of you may be very familiar with us. We've been around since 67. Uh, we do have uh, several campuses in the state of Pennsylvania. So uh, if you're familiar with us, that's great. Maybe I'll give you a little bit more depth. And if not, uh, I'll introduce you to who we are. So on, on today's agenda, I'm, welcome, um, I'm welcoming uh, high school students, counselors, and teachers to this webinar. Uh, who is YTI Career Institute? What programs do we offer? What is our process? And then of course, Q&A. And we'll cover this all in, in the scope of about 20 to possibly 25 minutes. So, you know, congratulations. Uh, I just, from a heartfelt, uh, you know, commitment to high schools over the last plus 30 years, uh, I really understand what it's like to go through a high school education in today's day and age with the pandemic. It's even, even more, uh, more of a challenge. So congratulations to anybody that's in high school that's uh, making this work. Uh, and uh, my hat is off to you. And uh, I know your parents and your educators and Lee and myself and all of us are very proud of you and, and how, you, uh, how you navigate these waters. It's only gonna make you stronger. It's making us all stronger in the business world too. But high school is a very, very important, uh, important portion of any person's life. Uh, all I can tell you is that, you know, you're forming like every other adult that has said, has said anything about it, is you're forming so many different uh, qualities and personality uh, traits and strengths and things like that, that will take you through, really basically take you through your whole life. Uh, so, you know, keep it up and uh, keep doing the right thing and stay strong. So it is okay to set your sights on careers in the healthcare, the computer field and skilled trades for or more year, four or more year majors at large campuses aren't the uh, only uh, opportunity out there, not really for everyone. Career education and training in 2021 and of course in 2022 is much more uh, than a consolation prize. Uh, on the way to work uh, this morning, um, I was listening to talk radio uh, actually, I'm, I'm calling you from actually the Hart Hartford, Connecticut area, and the local uh, radio station had a, a, a person, an employee, I'm sorry, an employer on the call, and they were talking about the job market and things like that. And one of the things that they mentioned, they said, you know, we have an inside joke that we talk about this and we say, try to find an electrician under the age of 60. Try to find an HVAC person. Try to find a, you know, try to find, a, try to find somebody that's in the trades. Uh, oftentimes, that uh, that is uh, it, that is not going to be retiring in possibly the next, you know, five, 10, uh, 20 years. So uh, it is an awfully uh, growing field, and it's a field that's always in demand. So five great things about YTI. 
While South Central PA born and raised, technical education since 67, flexible career training programs, and then teams to support you. And then of course, we're accredited by a national accreditation called ACCSC, which is Accrediting Commission of Career Schools and Colleges. So why South Central PA born and raised? Why, why is that so important, Jack? It's important because when you have a campus uh, that is fit, situated in a community, uh, you know the employers, you, you, know the, you know the job market, you, you know the educational requirement, you know the job demands and the demands just in general in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, you know, the economic conditions of that, of that community. So it's important uh, to be born and raised in that area. And you know, honestly, I mean, there's 12 campuses and, and I manage all, uh, all, all 12 for the high school uh, teams and, and they're all different. You know, it's different, it's different in Hartford, Connecticut than it is in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It's different in York than it is in Altoona. So technical education 667, that says a lot. We've been in business for quite a, quite a few years. And of course we're growing and changing all the time and flexible career training programs. I'm gonna talk a little bit about hybrid. I'm gonna talk a little bit about online and, uh, and I'm gonna talk about a, a, a quite a bit about learning online and labs on campus. Teams to support you, extremely organized uh, organization. All 12 campuses are managed by the same uh, executive team and uh, same standards, uh, same values and such. And then accreditation is key. If you're looking at a number of schools, which you probably are, I would just uh, you know, caution you, make sure that the schools that you're looking at are accredited. If you, ever, if you ever talk to somebody from a school and they say, well, we're not accredited because you know, we don't wanna go through all of that hassle and all of the requirements and the rigorous demands of being accredited. So we don't, we don't bother with that. That's a red flag and I'd head in the other direction. When you're accredited like we are, nationally accredited with this ACCSE, that means that they come and they look at a, a, an annual report that we submit to them every year, of course, and then they come out every five years to our campus and they spend, you know, a day or two and they go through student files, employer fi employee files, employer files, graduation rates, placement rates, curriculum. They do surveys of our students and staff. Uh, so it's very, very important to be accredited. The other part of accreditation is it simply means that this, that school can then give uh, financial aid, Title IV funding to, the, to their students. So huge. And we are accredited with ACCSA. We're also accredited with many programmatic accreditations, ABHES, and there's a ton of acronyms in education. Our mission is to support committed students in achieving technical professional skills essential for the chosen career through an industry model, student-centered education and training. And here are our values. Now, these are our values as an organization, and these are the values that I'm sure everybody, we all strive for these values in our, in our own lives. Very, very important to be professional and have integrity and trust and accountability. Teamwork is key, uh, of course. You see that in high school right now. And you know, you might be a student that, that uh, maybe knows, you know, you're just really a good student and you know, a lot of, you know a lot of answers to a lot of questions. And sometimes you're, because you're humble and you're team oriented, you know, you may, you may sit back and say, wait, I'm just gonna let this one ride. I know, I know what the square root of that is or whatever, you know, I'm going to let this one ride. And oh, I see somebody getting ready to raise their hand over there that never talks, let them go. Boom. They get the, they get the prize. Hey, they got the right answer. And you learned a very valuable lesson. Sometimes it's better to listen than speak. Sometimes it's better to give than take teamwork in the business world. I can tell you it is so valuable, so valuable when you have humility and teamwork, excellence, relationships, and having a little bit of fun. Our vision is to grow our school with quality and integrity through the collaborative pursuit of excellence. Here are our locations. So we have a location in Altoona, York and Lancaster. Now the Altoona campus is strictly for the respiratory therapy program. And that program is, uh, is pretty much online. So most of our students, are, most, not most of our students, all of our students are doing learning online and then lab and clinics uh, when they get ready to graduate. So it's only one program out of Altoona and that's respiratory therapy. Out of our your campus, I'm gonna be explaining the programs there. And out of our Lancaster, I'll be explaining the programs there. And even though I'm from Hartford, you know, from this, I'm talking to you from Hartford, I've been over that bridge many, many times between York and Lancaster. Um, so I love Pennsylvania. You got a great state down there. Uh, let's see, where are our graduates working? Well, this is just a small sampling, Aspen Dental, Hershey, we know, well, what would Hershey be? Hershey could be, you know, it could be culinary. <clears throat> It could be electrical, could be HVAC, could be a number of things. And you got WellSpan, so this is our health allied health. You got tech systems, could be some of our CAD and then the animal hospital would be of course a lot of our veterinarian technician. Career services is our, our, our curriculum is actually employer-based curriculum. In other words, 
employers tell us what they'd like our students to know, and then we fashion our, our curriculum around that. And then we have uh, full-time career advisors that work with our graduates throughout their education and uh, very closely as they get ready to graduate. Uh, and that's very important as well. You know, I usually pause in these webinars before I get into the programs and just, you know, just make a, a statement here that we do not, we do not guarantee a job. It's actually illegal to guarantee a job. Again, red flag if a school ever says, oh yeah, you know, we, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll definitely get you a job. We guarantee a job. That's not a good thing. Nobody can guarantee anything. And it's really not, uh, well, the accreditation standards don't let you do that. And that's actually a, a good thing. Uh, but as far as uh, working with our students, yes, we work very, very closely with our students. We teach them how to interview uh, and, and we work very closely with them. And by the way, it's lifetime. So, so let's say a student graduates, they go out, they work for a company, the company relocates, they outgrow the job, they, whatever happens, and, and they can always come back again to us and we'll update their resume. We have, yes, we certainly do have quite a few contacts. We have databases of many, many employers, and then we'll work with them. But we don't guarantee financial aid and we don't guarantee a job but we do give you a, an excellent um, process in both of them. So let me just go back here. So, uh, so this is, these are our programs now. We're gonna delve into the programs. I'm gonna go very, very quickly. And I do uh, recommend that you go to YTI. I believe it's probably the easiest URL in the country. It's just yti.edu. That's it, yti.edu. You go there and you're gonna be able to do a much deeper dive on all of our programs. They have pages. Uh, regarding uh, financial aid. They have pages regarding career services. It, it's just got everything in there for you. It's a wonderful website. So our programs are, are business, culinary, computers. Under those divisions, under business, we have business uh, operation uh, management, culinary arts, pastry, computer-aided drafting and design, computer data management. Under our healthcare field, we have dental, expanded function dental, health information management, Medical Assistant, MBC, which is Medical Billing and Coding, Respiratory Therapy, remember that one? That's in Altoona. And then Veterinarian Technician, and that's in our York campus. And then over here, we have our skilled trades, which are electrical, electronics, engineering, and HVAC. All these pictures here, I'd say 95% of the pictures that you see in this presentation are actually from our school. You can, I like this picture. You see, this is the instructor, this is the student. They're work, this student's working on a diagnostic board. This is an HVAC board, actually. And uh, what it has is it has all these, these, these little blocks over here are what they call logic controls. Uh, and and here's, a, uh, here's a motor control. And what they're doing is he's learning how to troubleshoot the electrical circuits re, uh, regarding an HVAC unit. These are actually light bulbs, it's hard to see. And they'll go up at different times when, when he's bugging the board. The instructor is there right with him helping. How will I learn hybrid? Okay, hybrid just basically is the courses are delivered in a hybrid, meaning a dual format with both didactic, fancy word for classroom. Uh, so so the, the academic or the didactic instruction is, to, excuse me, is done online. And then the lab simulations are occurring online and final term externships, clinical rotations occurring off campus. I mentioned that a little bit for the RT and the vet tech program. That's hybrid one. Hybrid two, of course, is delivered again in a format of hybrid, which means computer and, uh, and, and uh, lab. So it's didactic instruction occurring online, hands-on labs occurring on campus and final term externship occurring off campus. And you can see all the programs there. Online, simple, it's just all courses in these programs are delivered online. And those are the business, the computer-aided drafting, the computer data management, the health information, and then the MBC medical billing and coding. By the way, a lot of our students really enjoy our hybrid uh, delivery because it allows them to fit their education into their lifestyle. So whatever their daycare centers or their part-time working hours are, and just think you don't have to get into your car and clear off your windshield on, on a February night at six o'clock and, you know, scoff down a hamburger and head to work, head to school rather. And, you know, through the snowstorm, you could sit right there uh, where you're going to be studying and you could take your online portion uh, right at home. Or you know, if it's a hybrid program, you could take your learning online right there. Uh, so business operation and uh, management, uh, you can see the, the program here. Down here, as far as what, what will I learn? Social media, operating efficiencies, inventory controls. And then this, this, this slide here, and you're gonna see them as I fly through this quickly. Again, do a deep dive in yti.edu at your own time and you'll, you'll have everything you need right there. Here, here's the tuition, here's the length of the program. And then, this, and then you'll see the career outlook over the next 10 years. Here's computer-aided drafting. 
many of uh, many of our students love that program. Computer aided drafting. Here's your tuition. Here's the length. Here's the career growth. C uh, CDM, computer data management. This one here is uh, working with the cloud installation, uh, administration, troubleshooting networks, uh, cybersecurity, tuition, length, career growth is 8% over the next two years. Or actually it's the next 10 years, depends. Yeah, and by the way, we have our, our, our notations there where we get those, a lot of those we get them from you know, Department of Labor. Culinary Arts and Restaurant Management, fascinating program. The difference here, it's culinary arts and management. What's so important about that is you say, well, wait a second, you know, I just thought, you know, you're, so you're gonna teach us how to cook. Yes, absolutely, we'll teach you how to become a chef, but we also teach the management of the food industry, which is something that a lot of people don't understand. Next time you go out to dinner, you're sitting there maybe, you know, even at a little tiny, like a little, little Italian restaurant or, you know, some type of, you know, place like that or pizza place or something like that or any place. And you're sitting there, even if it's a McDonald's, Sit there and think. Well, what are they? Are they making any money here? What's the PNL? What's the profit and the loss here? Restaurant management is built around cost of the goods, cost of the uh, operation. You know, you have to rent the building or own the building, pay insurance in the building. You have to pay your staff and all that type of thing. So when you have that plate of spaghetti, by the time you pay for the spaghetti and pay for all of the what's involved in that, what's your markup? What's your margin? So the management's really important. But you can go out to the business and you know you're a chef, but you also know that the person that just hired you needs to make some money to pay their bills, then they really appreciate the fact that you understand the business itself. Here's your tuition, the length, and uh, the career growth. Dental assistance, huge program. Again, you're going to get videos, you're going to get testimonials and everything on yti.edu. Here's the length of the program. It's, it's only 10 months. The tuition's 17, and it's 7% growth. So like we were talking about before, in 10 months, you go to school, 10 months, it's under a year, you graduate, you get out, you become a dental assistant, and then you go to work for, so for, you know, you know, $17,000, okay, I get it. And then the student fees and things like that, I get it. But then you get out there and, uh, and that's it. <clears throat> Your student loans are a lot less, excuse me, and you have a career. Expanded function dental assisting is a dental assistant kind of advanced course. It's a, it's a short course that you put on top of dental assistant after you've been in the field for uh, two years. You have to be in the field for two years or you have to be CDA, a certified dental assistant. And then you can come and take the EFTA course and that, uh, and that gets you to, a, to another level. Popular course. Electrical technology, self-explanatory. You can see the picture, the students wiring a, bo a box right now. Program, again, nine months. Nine months, <clears throat> tuition is 15. On top of that, there's approximately $4,000. You get a laptop, you get your tools, you get your equipment, you get your uniforms, you get consumables, that type of thing. Uh, and, then, uh, and then it goes nine months and then you have your uh, career outlook. Uh, electronics engineering, that is uh, more like the low voltage. You can see, well, they got a traffic signal there, but it's also security alarms, uh, fire systems, home entertainment. Um, you know, just again, you know, I'm, you, you go inside of a Dunkin' Donuts and look at the security cameras and look at the, uh, some of the LED lighting and things like that. Uh, it's a, that's a really great feel, low voltage. Uh, electronic engineering technology program is, a, is an, a, a degree program. It's 21 months long, tuition here, growth there. I know we're moving here, we're doing pretty good. Uh, HIM, health information management, uh, of course, a big thing about the healthcare field is just like every other business, it's like, you, you know, you have patients, you have insurance companies, you have all types of uh, dynamics inside that industry. And at the end of the day, uh, that person who is a doctor or a nurse or a, whatever they are, uh, they, you know, they hope they're making money. Um, you probably, I'm sure you're well aware of it. There's been so much in the, in the, in the, in the just in the media, re, you know, over the last couple of years, hospitals. You know, we had hospitals going out of business. How can a hospital go out of business? Well, it costs a lot to run that stuff. Well, a health information management person is, is somebody that can get in there and move what? Information. Information that will help keep businesses running. Uh, and it, and it, it's, it's, it's a little complicated, but everything is uh, on the website there for you. It goes over it in great detail. A very, very valuable field. A 20 months, here's your tuition. And then there's the growth. HVACR. The R stands for re refrigeration. So it's heating, ventilation, air conditioning, refrigeration, uh, walking coolers, ice machines. You know, next time you go to a giant, 
Uh, up here, we had call them stopping shops and things like that. Down there, you have your giants and such. You go down there and you go down and get a, a, a quart of ice cream, refrigeration, um, walk-in coolers, things like that. Um, and then, of course, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. Uh, here's the program's length, the cost, and the growth. Huge program. Medical assistant. We all know what that is. If you ever go to a doctor, when you go to a doctor's office, they take your height, your weight, your blood pressure. Uh, they can drop blood. Uh, they, do, they can do EKGs. Um, the, the lot, lot to this program. You have to really, if you love working with people, and you want to help people, medical assistance is a wonderful program. Uh, it's, again, it's 21, 20 months long. Here's your tuition. And then the, the growth is 19%. It shows how, how much it grows. Medical building and coding, detail-oriented. Do you like a little bit of math? Do you like detail-oriented? oriented, you're good on uh, communicating, <clears throat> you may be inter interfacing with insurance claims and things like that. Um, and again, here it is. So it's 10 months, very similar. You'll see a commonality between the length pastry. I miss, I miss going to Pennsylvania and, and, and stopping off at the pastry uh, department on my way back to uh, Connecticut. They had a lot of great stuff down, muffins, all types of pies and stuff like that. You could take, students did great job. All right, so here, pastry, 21,000. Uh, 21, Length is 12 months, growth is 5%. Respiratory therapy, RT, speaks for itself. Huge, 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 huge program. Um, 32, it's a 20, 20 month uh, degree program. It says 19% growth there. And then of course, as you look down here, you can see my cursor, that's the uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, that's BLS for the government. Uh, so that that's, uh, that, that's probably right in the ballpark, might be a little bit higher than that. Uh, veterinarian technician, if you love animals, um, which we all do. Nice program. 20 months, similar, 16% growth. And that's it. So uh, we, we, may, we got a chance to get through all the programs. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about just a couple of closing comments here as we wrap it up. Steps of success. One of the things that we really emphasize in our education is making sure that students understand how to be successful. You know, when you go out to a job, when look at you guys are navigating high school, man, oh man, uh, by the time you get in and out of high school, you're very, very, you're very smart. You know who to, who to hang with, who not to hang with, who to listen to, who you believe, who you don't believe, use your intuition, use your critical thinking skills, that type of stuff. When you get to, when you get to the business, it's the same thing, but your steps of success are built around your personal assessment. What does that mean? You know, do you take yourself to task? Are you self-aware? Do you realize that maybe, you know, you, there are things that when nobody's perfect, there are things that you got to work on. So you take an assessment, you do a little check once in a while in the mirror, you do a little check once in a while on, you know, how you speak to people and all that type of stuff. Do you take yourself to task? And, and that goes on really for, for your whole, whole rest of your life, right? And then your parents, time management, mastering your trade, commitment, dependability, and attendance. One of the biggest things when I hear from employers are, will they come on time and are they dependable? Are they, are they dependable? Are they going to come to work? You know, do they swear? You know, are they going to turn off my customers or are they going to understand my customers? Are they good listeners? But safety, behavior, respect, responsibility, communication. And is that mighty T word called teamwork? All right. Financial aid. Financial aid is available for those who qualify. Our educational funding representatives will discuss available options. And our educational funding department, again, works for YTI. And it's a division of our school. And, and they'll, they'll talk to you about creating your FSA ID, uh, completing your FAFSA, which is a free application for federal student aid. I'm sure if you're a senior, you know all about that, right? The FAFSA. Uh, so you, you get your FSA ID, that's your key into your FAFSA, you get your FAFSA done, and then that tells you what you qualify for the federal aid. And then our counselors, our educational funding counselors will meet with you uh, and, and they talk to you all about what you're qualified for, uh, what other options are out there for you. Uh, there's, uh, of course, the IA, which is so, so keen uh, for all of us, uh, Lee and, and myself and, and uh, Imagine America and YT have worked together for many, many years. And uh, then the, the school ha has another scholarship called a Beacon Scholarship. I strongly recommend go to the yti.edu and then you get the parameters and all the details around Imagine America Scholarship, as well as uh, the Beacon and such. And, and look, you know, and look, um, and look for other sources, too. There's all different types of sources out there. Money's very, very important, as we know. Classes are forming now, believe it or not. You guys know it. Well, well my doctor, I'm talking to you guys in high school. Of course, you remember growing up. Some people, they say to me, well, students aren't looking at schools now, are they? Don't they wait? I said, no. No, they don't wait. They get out, they, they've been looking since they were junior. So applications are accepted throughout the year. We are enrolling students right now for our next uh, class starts. You would be eligible for a class start in um, 
August, I think it's August 16th. And then we roll around to October and I believe it's October 17th or something like that, October 22nd. Anyway, you'd be, you could put in an application off for either August or October. We have five starts per year. Um, and we do, we do start at other time, starts in January, March, uh, and then we start in uh, August, October and uh, April. So, so, um, so these are our five starts per year. The ones that you have are in August and October and then students are encouraged to, uh, they are encouraged to apply early. It's really easy. Our application process is all online. Again, you go to the yti.edu. Here, I see my cursor right here. And, um, and you click on that, uh, apply now, if that's what you're interested in doing. If you're going there to get, just get a lot more information, then just go there and you can, you can find a lot more information uh, there as well. And then if you decide, hey, you know, this does look good to me, you can apply online on our yti.edu as well. So it's really a handy, a very handy site. And that's, that's it. And we're right on time here. So I'll turn it back over to you. All thank right. you, Lee. Yeah, thank you. Um, we are going to open this up for the Q&A portion at the, of our presentation now. So if you have a question for Jack, please uh, enter it into the, the Q&A feature. Um, now, Jack, the first person wants to know uh, if you have any sort of events coming up, um, either an open house or a virtual tour. Um, can you speak to anything you got coming up? Oh, yeah, sure. Definitely. Yeah, what we could do is, uh, again, they could go to the yti.edu and there's an offense. There is an events uh, link there. You click on the events and then it pops up. We do have um, uh, uh, tours, open house uh, campus tours, the first and the third Wednesday of every month. Oh. Um, so you could do it that way. Just go right to the events. If you want a, a personal connection with somebody and you haven't been to the YTI.com, you do yet just do that fill out your information and then you will be given a series of uh emails and texts and how to set up a, an individual uh you know virtual tour and that type of thing as well okay and um our second question i think this may have come in before you talked about it but this person wants to know um if students are eligible for federal financial aid in order to come to school so they can fill out a fafsa to, to come to school at yti Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Lee. Ab yeah, ab absolutely. We recommend it. Uh, even sometimes students will come in and say, well, you know, I, I don't know if I'll ever qualify for We say, look, at, you, you know, fill it out. It only takes, it takes about an hour. Fill out your FAFSA, your free application for federal student aid. You'll see what you're going to get. Uh, and then, and then we kind of take it from there. And uh, sometimes people get more than they expect. Sometimes they get less than they expect. And in any event, we will work with you and we'll do everything that we can uh, to try to find other sources of financing uh, to help you go to school. And uh, we do the best we can working with everybody. So yeah, we're here for you. Awesome. That's great. And uh, I'm sure that they appreciate that. Thanks, Jack. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Just a, a couple of house cleaning items here before we close. Um, we, uh, we have recorded this session and we'll be forwarding all of our registrants, uh, the recording of this session, uh, likely tomorrow morning after I've gotten a chance to add it to our website which again is www.imagine-america.org. There's also a quick uh, follow-up survey after you leave this meeting. It's only about three or four questions. If you wouldn't mind providing any sort of feedback for ourselves and Jack, uh, that would be very helpful for us so that we know, you know, hey, are we honing in on the right stuff that you want to hear? Uh, any feedback that you have will help us uh, tailor our future presentations. But before closing, I just want to thank our participants for taking time out of their busy schedules to join us today. And I'd also like to thank Jack for sharing with us today's presentation and encourage each of you to contact him directly with any future questions you may have. I will include Jack's contact information in the email with the link uh, to this recording that I send out to you tomorrow. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Jack Burke and myself, I wanna thank you all for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye. <laughs>